Hello, this is Melorian, and now this will be my second practice game for the Brawler Bash, and it's going to be my Orcs and Goblins up against some Ogre Kingdoms. So, you guys know my thoughts on Orcs versus Ogres, which is really, m trolls and stuff like that just outperform Ogres. They just, they're better for the points. And then when you put in things like the Foot of Gork and stuff, it's just whenever I face Ogres, I just trounce them. So when I was posting that, I had another guy that I, you know, I'd never really talked to before that said, Hey, well, Malorian, if, if you want before Brawler Bash, just, let's try this out. Try them against my ogres. So here we are. Of course, you know, my list, you can see them deployed here. The only thing that's not very clear, of course, is probably the fact that I have some wolves on the far right that you can't see. And the savages on the left are inside the building. I've actually decided to go and put my shaman back with my bunker this game because he actually has death magic and he has the whole... Uh, hell ha help it. Uh, what is it called? Hell heart. That's it. So I, I gotta really watch the whole range on that. Otherwise, his list is actually fairly different than what I normally see for an ogre army. So what he has is the two saber tucks on the left. He has a big unit of man eaters, which is a, just a mix of different models. But what they have is the poison and swift stride. Then he has well, they also have the flaming banner, which I found out soon enough. Uh, he has eight of the lead belchers. I think it's 8, maybe it's even 10, but either way, he then has 3 units of just 3 bulls, just kind of like the, the whole uh, spam kind of little unit thing. Which, you know, I mean, I saw that type of thing in 7th, but you just don't see that in 8th anymore. It's always a big unit, so really interesting to see how he's going to be using that. He has 2 iron blasters on the right, and then of course he has his death star in the back. I mean, this one, finally, I mean, some ogre players forget to do this, and they don't take the banner where it'll... If you cast magic on them on the 2+, plus, it goes somewhere else. He has that there, so that will protect him against Foot of Gork. He has on uh, the BSB. He also has a Tyrant in there. He has his Slaughter Master in there. The Fire Belly is beside it. And, uh, yeah, the unit also has, of course, the one where they have a, a Breath Weapon and all that fun stuff. So, really, the way I see this game going down is I actually want to use those little units of bulls to, to hurt him. I mean, the actual mission we're practicing from Brawler is one, we want to kill the three cheapest units in your army. So for him, it's going to be the two Saber Tusks and the far right unit of three. And for me, it's going to be the three bosses that are back in my bunker. But for the most part, I just want to get in there and kill stuff because that's small points. I really want to go for the wipeout. So the way I see it is if I just run up there and kind of block the unit of three, it'll block the Death Star. The Black Orcs can deal with whatever units over there and the two Iron Blasters and turn around. Savages will be able to take care of the man-eaters, turn around, the trolls, take care of the lead belchers, turn around, and then I'm going to have everything against uh, the Death Star there. So that's the plan. He wins first turn, he's moving on up. He goes and he casts with Irresistible Force, the Flame Cage, on the right side here. So my Black Orcs take some damage, he takes a wound on his guy. He does some shots into my trolls, and so of course that does some damage. Uh, first shooting with the Flaming Attacks, and then unloading with the eight lead belchers. Uh, on the far left, he's actually was hoping to go through with his saber tusks, but uh, that forest is a one where at the end of the movement phase in a four plus, you take wounds. So he basically went into it and then back out of it. Uh, and also what his lead belchers are doing, or not lead belchers, his iron blasters. So they're just trying to start picking off my war machines. So bam, bam, you know, he's, he's probably already knocked off a, a rock lava and a doom diver at this point. All right, so on my turn, I'm able to get out of the building. There's no animosity or anything like that. So the savages are coming out of the building on the left. Uh, the Doom Diver is able to kill the Saber Tusk on the left. And I believe the other one was killed with a chariot or something on the other side. I'm pretty sure both Saber Tusks are already dead. Oh, no, no, the other Saber Tusk is by the fences. So that one's still alive, but one of them is dead. Uh, I've already moved up the one Night Goblin unit to, to try and block the three bulls there so they're at the point now where he can't actually twist around them in fact i i seem to even remember that maybe i had it so that they failed that mlc and got some extra movement either way of course the black orcs didn't move because that'd be silly uh other shooting trying to destroy a lead an iron blaster did not work and the biggest disappointment i had is i went for a foot of gork slammed it down onto the uh, well the irresistible force onto his lead belchers 
it scatters, so it only does four wounds. Like, I hit, like, three guys, and then it does D3 wounds, and still only did four wounds. Then, to see if it keeps going, it didn't, it stopped, and with the miscast, I forgot the spell. So, you know, of course, Foot of Gork is such a massive thing to use against them. It's almost like forgetting the Dreaded 13th against Warriors. So, that's pretty bad. I really want to try and cream some of these units on the left to make it so I can sweep around faster, but either way, I'm still feeling fairly confident at this point. His turn, and you can see he did some <laughs> some good damage to me. Uh, what he really does with his movement phase is his Saber Tusk is over there to redirect the trolls. Pretty, pretty much everything is here for the redirect. Uh, you can see that his Fire Belly actually joined that unit that was in front of my Night Goblins in order to get better range onto my Shaman. It actually worked out. Uh, I ate the miscast, killed some of my night goblins, but otherwise, you know, nothing too bad. I didn't even lose a wound on my shaman. So that's that's not too bad for what could happen from the Hellheart. Otherwise, you can see his stuff moving around on the right. He's starting to destroy more of my war machines. You can see my other Doom Divers gone right now. And then in the shooting phase, he's able to kill a whole bunch of my guys there, both in the Trolls and from the, the Night Goblins. So I'm taking some losses, but you know what? The Night Goblins, they're not very all, all that important. I am more bothered that I'm losing so many Trolls already, but now I'm in a position where I, well, I would be able to charge if it wasn't for that dog in the way there. My turn two is a little bit more productive. I charged the right unit of three bulls. They fled from my black orcs. I then redirected into the other bulls, killed them. So now I'm in a perfect position here. Uh, the one unit that fled first, I charged with my dogs, caught them and destroyed them. So that's pretty cool. Uh, of course, the last saber tusk, it was killed from a charge uh, from my... Uh, trolls. I sent the chariot into the lead belchers, mainly not because I thought I was going to do anything to them, but just mainly just to hold them up, uh, and then kind of block the man eaters behind. So that worked out. Killed a few guys, and they're there. Uh, savage, savages obviously are moving farther up. Shooting does nothing. Magic does nothing. And now I'm liking this position because I mean, look how the Death Star is trapped. The man eaters are trapped, and now it's just a point of me getting ready to go in there and kill some stuff. I'm a little bit worried that maybe because I'm so far back with my BSB and stuff, he could be sending his Iron Blaster into the flank of my Black Orcs, and I mean, he could send both of them in there, and then he'd probably win, and then I wouldn't. I would be steadfast on an eight with no reroll, but we'll have to kind of see what he does. Now, his turn three, this was pretty critical. So, you guys might actually, I mean, it might help to actually go back to the last picture to see what I'm talking about, but I'll do my best to explain it here. We had a few uh, discussions on how movements would be done in previous turns, and this one really got, I mean, I wouldn't say heated, but we definitely uh, were, were both kind of passionate about the ways we thought that this was going to be rolling out. So, of course, like I said, the unit in front was blocking a Death Star behind. He charged the Night Goblins, and of course, if he does that first, they'll be out of the way so the Death Star can go across. I fled with the Night Goblins, knowing that his unit of four is too wide to sneak between those two units, so it would be an automatic failed charge. What he decided to do instead was redirect into the Black Orcs. And this is where really the, the big question came up, because what he wanted to do was to charge in both that unit of four and the Death Star. And of course, the way that you play it out here, and that you can see in the picture, is the way that I thought it would go. So basically, when they wheel in to go inside there, there's no way the Death Star can wheel to get into combat. It's just not physically possible. Now, the counter-argument that was on his side is that, well, if you were to charge first with the small unit and basically just clip at the very end, touching two orcs or something, and have, you know, three of the ogres hanging off the base, then the Death Star could also charge in, and you're maximizing the number of black orcs in there. So really, it's just like it says in the book, you roll to see if both get inside, and then you put them uh, both in. You don't need to have equal from both sides, but you have to mo maximize models in combat. Now, the problem with this, though, is that even though, then this is my counter to it, that the black orcs might be maximized, but the ogres aren't being maximized. I mean, in this case, you have a 100 
100% of the ogre side being engaged, and if you did the other side, you had a whole bunch of ogres being leaned out. So it just didn't seem right. We argued about it a little bit. Uh, in the end, he decided that my way seemed right. Uh, the interesting thing is that after when I was talking to one spitten about it, he thought, well, no, he was pretty sure that the ogre player was right, and that you would play it out so that they're kind of overhanging like that. So it is kind of an interesting one. If you guys have any thoughts and opinions on it, please post it down below. But obviously, this was a, a critical moment during the game. Uh, another part of this, too, is he decided not to charge in the Iron Blasters. Otherwise, in his turn three, you can see his man eaters just kind of reformed. He beat my chariot in combat. I, actually, I'm pretty sure he just, just destroyed it. No, I must have broken. He overran into my troll, so of course I'll beat them there. Uh, my black orcs. This is kind of silly. You'd think I would just decimate them, but uh, yeah, I just didn't really roll that well. So you can see a lot of them actually survived. Actually, a big part of it was my mistake, where I put a lot of attacks on the fire belly to kill him off, forgetting that he has a big ward against flaming attacks, which I have because of the ba banner. So they break. I decided not to chase them, so they're way over there on the left side. And then I had a choice, because what he did is he moved his Slaughtermaster out of the unit and up so he could actually get past my lines and get to my bunker. Because, I mean, first of all, he'd be casting magic at me and trying to kill me. Second of all, he's pretty damn tough, and he might be able to come here and kill my Shaman. So he already did a wound to me with the death magic I believe he has. But, uh, yeah, otherwise, I had to decide with the Black Orcs whether I should charge the Slaughtermaster, or whether I should go after the Iron Blasters. And at the end of the day, I went after the Iron Blasters. My turn three, things are really starting to come together. What I actually did here to make this all work out is I charged the Savages into the flank of the Lead Belchers, and so when I beat them and overran, I went and I overran into the flank of that big horde, his Death Star. So once I saw this, like, well, the game's pretty much over, because now I'm just going to squash them, uh, otherwise the trolls are just right there and reform to fight whatever they need to. And then on the far side here, my Black Orcs destroy one of the Iron Blasters, overrun, and unfortunately fall an inch short of getting to the other Iron Blaster. But, you know, scoring some points. His turn four, and I mean, man, this just baffled me. Now, first of all, let's touch on the thing where I shot all my stuff at his uh, Slaughtermaster and missed everything, and now he's just kind of taken off. But uh, because I kind of moved away my Shaman to be safe and all this stuff, I put actually these bosses in his way. So if he tried charging me, he would just get kind of redirected away and I get to shoot again. So he's taken back off towards his unit. Uh, but as you see there, geez, look at that. A whole bunch of savages are, are running for the hills. So what happened here is I hit him in the flank, right? We, we saw that part. Uh, over on the side, he moves over his tyrant, his BSB, and also his champion. Now, something I didn't learn till after when I was chatting with some other people, you can't actually move over the champion, uh, which kind of reduced my attacks. But the main thing there is that I had to put all my attacks into them. So that really kind of affected those things. Um, I did do pretty awesome. I almost killed the BSB. I put a couple of wounds. Uh, so the BSB only has one wound left. Of course, I killed the champion. The tyrant took one or two wounds. But the main thing is that when he attacked back, he just rolled like fire. Those three models killed like 13 of mine. And uh, yeah, I lost. I broke. And the only good news is that he failed to catch me. So I'll save some points. Uh, otherwise, you can see he also rallied with his other unit. My turn four, I charge into the rear of the bulls there with the fire belly, and I make the mistake here where I directed attacks at the fire belly. He was almost dead, uh, but in the end, I, I flopped, and I, I mean, if I would have done the same rolls against a bull, I would have killed one of the bulls, but because I didn't kill anything, he was steadfast, turned around to face me. So that was kind of a tactical error on my part. Otherwise, the trolls charge into his group there, and again, I mean, you'd think that, okay, my trolls into his guys, I'm not going to squash them. Nope, I did not. So it's just... <laughs> I would be fully expecting me just to be destroying him, but it's not really working out. Uh, one thing he does have going for him is I actually believe he has plus one toughness on right now. So, I mean, that is helping him, but still, the, just the massive attacks these guys are eating is being very surprising to me that they're actually holding out. And what happened over here is actually he had moved back with his Iron Blaster in such a way that my wolves were in the way so I couldn't charge. So all I had to really do is move the wolves out of the way and the Black Orcs are chasing this Iron Blaster. 
His man eater is going to the flank of my chariot, and uh, you can guess how that fight's going to go. And at the end of the turn, it looks like this. So, yeah, chariot is gone. Uh, fire belly's dead. So, hooray, there's a little something. Uh, of course, my well, my this time he got uh, more buffs on. He beat my trolls. Uh, broke, but I got away, bumped through all these things, stopped before the end of the board, and so, again, he's missing out on 630 points, but, you know, they're out of my general's reign, so I'm going to need a four to rally, but it must be frustrating for him to not be able to score these points for running me down. My turn five, and you know, you would think that, you know what, it might be nice to charge in and get like a flank on the man-eaters and charge in and kill the rest of those bulls, but yeah, how about this, let's fail animosity and just fight ourselves and do nothing. So, <laughs> there you go, no big points for Malorian, no magic phase, however, I believe that's a completely fair trade because I passed my leadership four and saved all those trolls, so that was amazing, so... Kind of silly to see this big swings of luck over here. So then on his turn six, he charges into the night goblins. Uh, he actually charges into the bunker. I flees, and he redirects into the bunker. Uh, not the bunker, the night goblins. Beats them. They go running off. Uh, he wanted to charge his man-eaters into my savages. He just couldn't get around the building. So he actually went inside the building, and that's pretty much it. The other sneaky thing he did is he actually moved the Iron Blaster away, and not only moved it away, but also spun it to the side, just for that extra little distance. And I mean, it's, it's just a smart thing to do, and in the end of the day, when I charge him on my turn 6, I end up being just one short because he turned. If he wouldn't have turned, I would have caught the Iron Blaster, so good play on my opponent's part. Otherwise, on my turn, for some reason, my shaman decides not to rally, so they're still running, and in this tournament, uh, you give up half points for fleeing units, so there's some stuff for him. Uh, and then actually what I do, just to try and get some stuff, is I charge my wolves into the flank of his two bulls. I kill one, he kills a couple of mine. Uh, I win combat, he breaks, but I fail to run him down. But in the end, you know, <laughs> I can't feel too bad when he failed to catch all the big point stuff. I mean, it's not a big deal to not catch 105 points, whatever these guys are. So when you added everything up, and especially with the extra victory points for me keeping those heroes alive and stuff, uh, it was a win for the orcs and goblins. Of course, there was some crazy luck going on in this game here, uh, with me being able to, you know, get away and rally and and all that fun stuff. But at the same time, it was also the other way where I couldn't believe. I mean, just. If, imagine how this game would go if I would have had Foot of Gork from the beginning, right? And actually smashing those units. Normally, if you get Foot of Gork off on Ogre units, they just melt like butter, right? But lost it for the entire game. Uh, also, you, you kind of had it with the animosity and me bouncing off the flank. Uh, who knows what had gone on if he wasn't able to move over that ch shot, uh, champion. But either way, the main thing is that he definitely proved his point that, I mean, not all ogres have to be like, oh, just hoard up, big bull, off you go. You know, he actually designed his army to be different, uh, play in the movement phase, play in the shooting phase. It was actually really refreshing to play against. So uh, there you have it, and thanks for watching. Bye.